You've got an image. You need to change its aspect ratio. But every time you try, you end up with something that looks off. What if you could change any image's aspect ratio quickly and professionally, without distorting the image, spending hours wrestling with complex software? In the next few minutes, I'll show you not just one, but five different methods to do exactly that. And trust me, you're going to love method number five because it's a trick most people miss. Whether you're working with photos, graphics, Etsy printable art, or any other type of image, you're about to become an aspect ratio master. But here's the real kicker. I'll also reveal how to use automation to apply these techniques to change the aspect ratios of hundreds of images at once. Imagine transforming your entire portfolio or product catalog in just a few clicks. Ready to change the aspect ratio of an image like a pro. Let's get you up to speed. Method number one. The stretching method. Let's say you want to change from aspect ratio 2 by 3 to aspect ratio 3 by 4. To begin, create a new document by going to the top menu and clicking on File, then selecting New. In the dialog box that appears, enter your desired dimensions. For this video, we'll be changing to aspect ratio 3 by 4. Click and choose inches from the drop down menu in case it's not yet selected. I will be working with the size 18 by 24 inches, which is one of the sizes in the aspect ratio 3 by 4, and set my pixel depth to 300 dpi. To learn more about aspect ratios, sizes, and dpi, check out this video. After you've set the dimensions, click OK to create the new document. Now, drag and drop your artwork into this new document. Since the aspect ratio of the artwork is different, you'll notice the artwork doesn't fit perfectly within the new dimensions. To stretch it, select the layer containing your artwork in the Layers panel. Then, press Ctrl-T or Command-T on a Mac to activate the free transform feature. You'll see a bounding box around your artwork. Click and drag the corners of the bounding box while holding on the Shift key on your keyboard. This will stretch only one part of the art rather than scaling all the corners altogether. Do this for each side until the image fills the entire canvas. However, this method does distort the original look and beauty of your artwork. If you do not want to distort the artwork, check the next method. Method 2. Extending the background with generative fill or content aware. To use the generative fill, first go to Windows and turn on the contextual taskbar. Then use the Rectangular Marquee tool to make a selection on the negative empty space, just a little allowing the selection to overlap on the artwork. Do this also for the other side as well. Then click on the Generative Fill. No need to add any prompt, just click Generate and wait for it to do the magic. Once it's done, you'll get three generated options to choose what works best for you. Alternatively, you can also use the Content Aware Fill if you don't have the Generative Fill on your Photoshop version. To do that, first right-click on the layer containing your art and click on Rasterize Layer. Then, with the Rectangular Marquee tool, select both sides of the empty space a little overlapping the artwork. Then right-click on the art and click on Fill. Now set this drop-down to Content Aware in case it's not selected and be sure to toggle on the color adaptation. When done, click OK. So basically this does the job, but yet again, it changes the original look and beauty of the artwork. Let's take a look at the third option. Method 3. Filling negative space with solid color. For this method, let's fill this empty space with a solid color that will complement the artwork. Select the background layer in the Layers panel and go to the toolbar on the left. Select the Paint Bucket tool from the tools available. Next, choose a color that complements your artwork. You can do this by clicking on the foreground color in the toolbar and picking a matching color using the Color Picker. Once you have your desired color, simply click in the empty space of the canvas to fill it. Alternatively, Go to your Adjustments layer menu below the Layers panel and click on Solid Color. Then with the eyedropper, choose a color that complements the art. 
This will give you the flexibility of changing the color to a more suitable one easily just by double-clicking on the thumbnail of the solid color layer. However, this method is limited to artwork that have a solid color negative space. Method 4. Adjusting without distortion. Instead of stretching your artwork as in the first method, let's adjust it to fit the new size without distorting the art. First, select your artwork layer and press Ctrl T or Command T to enter free transform mode. Drag the corners of the bounding box to resize your artwork. As you resize, you might need to position your artwork beyond the canvas area to highlight the most important elements of your design. This will result in some cropping, but it helps ensure that the essence of your artwork remains intact. Once you're satisfied with how it looks, press Enter to apply the changes. This method keeps your artwork looking sharp and true to its original beauty without any distortion or stretching. And method number five, mirroring for creative effects. If you want to get creative, mirroring can also be an effective technique. In this method, we're going to fill those empty gaps using mirroring. First, make sure your artwork layer is selected. Now, duplicate your artwork layer by pressing Ctrl J or Command J on a Mac. Next, with the duplicated layer selected, then click on Ctrl T or Command T to bring out the transform tool. Then scroll to the top left corner and choose the direction on the reference point location, depending on the point of the negative spaces on your art. Then right-click on any part on the art and click on Flip Horizontal if it's sideways or choose Vertical if it's top or bottom. Now do the same also for the other side of the negative space. This technique not only adds an artistic flair but also keeps your composition looking balanced and cohesive. Now, let's say you're changing the aspect ratios of tens to hundreds of artworks for your Etsy store. And for each product, you want to have it in five different aspect ratios. That means you'll need to repeat this method for each of the artworks. Manually creating these artworks in multiple different aspect ratios one at a time would take several hours, if not days, to complete. But with the bulk mock-up plugin, this boring and repetitive work can be completely automated. So, we will be using these special templates. Each template corresponds to a different aspect ratio. You can download them using the link in the description. Next you need to do is organize your files into three folders. In folder 1, place the templates you downloaded. In folder 2, place the artwork you wish to change to other aspect ratios. And leave folder 3 empty as your export location. Now open Photoshop and navigate to Plugins, then select the bulk mock-up plugin. Then, specify these three folder paths into the corresponding input fields in the bulk mockup plugin. For this demonstration, we'll choose the fit to canvas cropping the extra option. This option will crop any excess while ensuring your artwork fits nicely into each template just like the fourth method explained earlier. After that, just click the Start Generating button and the plugin will jump into action, changing your artworks into the aspects ratio provided on the templates in no time. The speed is incredible. And just like that, you've mastered how to change the aspect ratio of your artwork. But what if you want to take it a step further and create video mockups instead? In the next video, I'll show you exactly how to use the bulk mockup plugin to batch create video mockups quickly and efficiently. It's going to save you hours of work, so make sure to check it out and see how this tool can transform your entire workflow.